In this screencast, we are going to talk about the fractional banking system and specifically the money multiplier. We're going to look at how the multiplier is calculated and then also different questions that can be asked and what you do with that multiplier in order to solve it. When we're talking about a fractional banking system, remember that when somebody deposits money into their checking deposit, a fraction or a portion of it has to be put into the required reserves. And so that reserve requirement is, in this case here, is a point two. And so a point two of $100 is put in the required reserves, and then the rest is put in the excess reserves. And that $80 then gets loaned out. And when somebody takes that $80, they deposit it into another bank. And with that amount, then a certain percentage of it gets put in the excess reserves, and then the other 20% gets put in the required reserves. You'll be expected to, to know that every time the full amount gets loaned out. So when we're um, doing problems with the multiple, the money multiplier assume that all of the amount in the excess reserves it gets loaned out. Money is created through loans and so when we're talking about the money multiplier we're talking about a change in the money supply. When we talked about the other multiplier in the unit 3 we talked about it, how that affected a change in real GDP. So in this case here with monetary policy and this reserve requirement, what we're talking about is a change in the money supply. So when we're talking about the money multiplier, the formula for it is 1 over the reserve requirement. And when you're thinking about this and thinking about the multiplier from the last unit, which was, remember, the tax multiplier, or you had the government spending multiplier, or you had the investment multiplier, the government spending and the investment multiplier were one over the MPS, the marginal propensity to save. Well, the reserve requirement is also how much the banks have to save. So it's that same idea here. It's just now about the money supply side instead of about the spending going on through real GDP. So with the money multiplier, we have one over the reserve requirement in order to figure that out. One of the ways that questions can be asked is they could ask you how much money is created through the entire banking system, um, what's the change in the entire banking system, or another way of asking it is a change in the money supply. When you are asked questions about this, about the entire banking system or a change in the money supply, the formula that you use is 1 over the reserve requirement times the excess reserves because the excess reserves are what get loaned out, right? And so that's what you're utilizing in questions like this. But one of the things that students tend to um, sometimes miss or get wrong is that some questions won't ask about a change in the entire banking system. Instead, they'll ask about the expansion of bank deposits or a change in demand deposits. And so what this is asking here is how much money keeps getting recreated not how much money is entered new into the money system because that initial deposit that you put in was money that somebody already had and so they're adding that in and so that's why it's not a change in the entire banking system that initial deposit and that's why you use the excess reserves that amount that they first um, loan out but when they ask about a change in the demand deposits or bank deposits, for that one, you're using the one over reserve requirement times the initial deposit because they want that one put in there. Another way that you could be asked questions, though, would be not about individuals and demand deposits that they put in, but it could be about the Fed. In order for the Fed to get money, they're not just printing it out and using it. Instead, what they're doing is they're getting money from banks and then they're utilizing those assets in order to add them to the money supply. So they aren't money that's trickling through the money supply. And, and that is why when you're looking at the change in the money supply through the entire banking system, when the Fed deposits money, you're taking one over the reserve requirement times the initial deposit of the Fed. So it's really important to look and first see what the question is asking. 
So let's take a look at some of the different questions ahead and see which one of the three formulas it is that we would use. So the first question here says, Charlie deposits $150 into the bank. The reserve requirement is 0.2. And usually they will always give you the reserve requirement, so um, you just need to then funnel that into 1 over the reserve requirement to get the money multiplier. How much money is created through the entire banking system? They did not use how much money is created through the demand deposits, so you need to recognize that they don't want that initial deposit accounted for when they're looking at how much money is created because that was already part of the money supply. So when you're looking here at the equation, you would use 1 over the reserve requirement times the excess reserves. And so with that here, if he's depositing $150 in and the reserve requirement is 20%, that means that $30 is put in the reserve requirement and then the 80% of $150 or $120 is going into the excess reserves. 1 over 0.2 is 5. So in order to figure out the change in the money supply, 5 times 120 is $600. So look at that versus the question here when it's asked, what is the expansion of demand deposits? And so for this one here, they want to know how much money is circulating within the bank itself, not the entire banking system. And so with the expansion of the demand deposits, you're, you're accounting for that initial deposit. So your formula there is 1 over the reserve requirement times the initial demand deposit. Um, again, 1 over 0.2 is a 5 times 150, because that's initially what Charlie is putting in, gives you a change in demand deposits of $750. Look at the difference between the two questions. How much money is created through the entire banking system? What is the expansion of demand deposits? Okay, the third way that they could ask a question using the money multiplier is about the Fed. And in this case here, what is the change in the money supply through the entire banking system from the Fed buying $200 worth of securities from a bank with a reserve requirement of 0.2. And so in this case here, you would have it where the change in the money supply would be 1 over the reserve requirement. This wasn't money circulating through the system. This was an asset that was within the bank. And as a result, then, you have to use that total amount that the Fed is now contributing to the money supply. And so the change in the money supply equals 1 over the reserve requirement times that initial deposit by the Fed, which creates a change in the money supply of $1,000. If you're wondering about the fractional banking system and going over um, understanding about the 1 over the reserve requirement, don't forget that on the webpage there is a video that we showed in class that I have the link for if you want to review that and how the multiplier is um, calculated.